Hey guys, it's me Anna. So today, uh, hi. So I know I haven't uploaded a video and um, I mean it's not, it hasn't been that long but like I do have a really good explanation which I'm going to explain in this video. The craziest thing happened to me. I've just been trying to recover from it. I swear these things only happen to me. So I did my first story time a few months ago about my concert horror story. If you guys want to go check it out, links will be down below. It gets pretty wild. And now I'm back at it again. Damn, Danya, subscribe. I am here to tell you of this crazy story time It has to do with Uber. Tinder, water, I still can't believe that it happened. Yeah, this is pretty much my story. This is my testimony. Let's get started, everyone. So this all begins one afternoon when I was scrolling through Tinder because I wanted to find my one true love. And I was pretty much just scrolling and seeing what matches I could get. And eventually I matched up with this guy and his name was Christopher. I will be using his full name and any of the other like people in this story, I'll be using their full names. I asked them beforehand and they go, yes, please, I need the court money. I'm not really sure what that means, but they gave me the okay, so I will be using their full name. So his name was Chris. Chris. His name is Chris. Did I mention his name is Chris? So Chris, which is his name, we matched up, we started talking, and at first glance, at, when I look at this guy, his pictures were kind of blurry. I didn't know if he was a fan of 21 Pilots. I didn't know what was going on, so I kind of just went with it. So I couldn't really see him, but I knew that his name sounded familiar to me because Chris is a kind of an uncommon name, and you don't hear that often. Did I mention his name is Chris? So Chris, I felt like I recognized him from somewhere, but I kind of just brushed it off because I recognize a lot of people. I'm kind of really famous. That's just, it's just a joke, guys. Like, the cameras that everywhere. Me and Chris decide we are going to meet up at this sort of local cafe thing. It's kind of really far away. It's in Kansas. He lives like really far away, like somewhere over there. And I live like somewhere over here. So we just decided to meet in the middle. And I know what you're thinking, you know, like Tinder and all these apps, they're like meant for like your area. But I lied a little bit and I just put in like a random zip code and I guess it ended up where he was. I'll put his address down below if you guys don't believe me. We meet up in Kansas at this like cafe thing. We meet and I see his car and it's sort of very new age and like very odd and that's like my first red flag because I'm a gold digger. I prefer Lamborghinis. I'm not really a car person but I am a money person. It looked like something that belonged in the ocean which was weird because I have a really big fear of sharks so I was like does this guy know that? Is he stalking me? We're sitting there and we're waiting and finally Witter calls his name. He's like Mr. Columbus your table's ready. We get to the table and they asked me what I want and it was around like what 1 30 and I decided to order just like a straight up bottle of vodka I didn't really know the rules about Kansas and like underage drinking but like some places like in Europe and stuff you can like drink like when you're like younger I guess so I don't know about the rules in Kansas Chris orders they bring him some water and he goes is that salt water and they go no and he goes can I please get some salt water and I was like what the heck mostly because I have like a really big thing on sodium and I'm like on a sodium free diet and whatever so don't get me wrong I'm not that good with world history but I think that sodium is bad for you anyways so I was just asking him like questions that you ask on a first date and I was like oh Chris is that short for anything because sometimes Chris is short for something like Christina or like Christ so I didn't know what his name was short for so he's like oh it's short for Christopher and I was like oh Christopher Columbus the name sounded familiar to me but I couldn't link the two together so he was like oh so do you want to take an uber back to my place and I was like whoa first of all Okay, there will be a discount code in the description for Uber. Um, it's 50% off your 53rd ride. Like, let's say your ride is like $75.15, then it's 50% off the 15 cents. That's a pretty good deal. Anyways, so I'm like, oh yeah, I'll just call an Uber because I use Uber all the time, as I said before. And Chris, who's the guy that I'm dating, he's like, oh no, like let me call the Uber. He presses his Uber app and he orders an Uber chopper. And I'm like, oh my God, what is this, The Bachelor? I was like, oh my God, like he's gonna propose to me. I was super excited because I was going to get married. I don't know like where Kansas is located on the world, but somehow we ended over the Atlantic Ocean. We were either over the Atlantic of the Pacific Ocean or the Native American. I know other people call it Indians, but like that's the incorrect term. It's Native American. We were somewhere in that range. Suddenly he hands me this umbrella and I go, what is this? Because it was polka dotted red and red looks so bad on me. The pilot opened the door and I was like, who's flying this? And he goes, trust me. And I look over to the pilot when he says those two words to me 
and I see that it's DJ freaking Khaled. I was like, oh my god, shouldn't you be down there in the ocean on the jet skis? You've really upgraded. DJ Khaled opens the door and Chris turns to me and he goes, Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. Excuse me? My name is Anna. I thought we were past this point. If you're gonna propose to me, you should damn well know my name. So he jumps out with his umbrella and he goes, Mary Poppins is my favorite movie. And I go, what the heck? My favorite movie is The Matrix. This relationship isn't going to work out. So I turn to DJ and I go, what do I do? And he goes, ride with me on the journey to success. I turned around, I kissed him on the lips because I loved him. And I was like, propose to me. And he goes, you're with Chris. And I go, dang it, I forgot. And he goes, our fan love will keep us together. Major key alert. And after hearing those three words, I jumped and went after Chris. Which, by the way, I can't swim. I'm illiterate. I don't really know a lot about like food science and technology, but I do know that I landed in the water and I was completely safe. I get in the water and I don't see Chris anywhere, and suddenly I feel his hand grab my ankle and pull me underwater. It was so romantic. I was like, I'm being kidnapped. Like, this is a kidnap proposal thing. I tried to act surprised. I was like, where are the cameras? Ah, where are the cameras? I'm so scared. But that wasn't the case, sadly. So he dragged me underwater and I hit my elbow on this like metal thing. I don't know that much about geometry, but I do know that when I opened my eyes, it didn't hurt and I could see everything clearly. I see that I bumped into this ship and it's literally so gigantic. So Chris grabs my hand and he pulls me to the door of it. We open the door and when we get inside, it's completely dry. I honestly don't know that much about chemistry, but I do know that I could breathe. And I know that we had some chemistry going on. And he goes, all right, I'm gonna show you around my house. And I go, your house? And he goes, my house. And he goes, this is the SS Tipton. I don't even know what I was like thinking at that point, but I thought I heard the word Titanic. And so I was freaking out because I love Leonardo DiCaprio so much. I can't believe that he just won a Grammy. Although my star sign isn't a Leo, I bet Chris's was. So it's practically the same thing. He starts showing me the around this cruise ship and he turns to me and he goes, I saw what you did with DJ. And and I go, it was a mistake. Like It was just an in the moment thing. You put me in a situation. You knew I was uncomfortable. How could you do this to me? He turns to me and he goes, all right, I forgive you because I did the same thing. It was some weird incest thing going on. It's like a threesome, I guess. So as we're walking and he's just like talking, we run into this stout, bald, really angry looking man. I see right before my eyes. Mr. Marion Mosby. I kind of did a little, <gasps> he turns around and he starts yelling at like nothing. No running in my lobby and he is like, I'm gonna slit your throat. So I turned to Chris and he was like, oh, Mr. Mosby's been having hallucinations for the past few years. It's just sort of like a mental thing that's going on with him. This is his first time out in the open in a long time. I am deeply, deeply attracted to Mr. Mosby. Ever since I was younger and I watched the show, I have always loved him. He turns to me and and suddenly he stopped screaming. I know this is the first sign that love is in the air. Even though there really wasn't any air, I don't know how Spanish works. He just straight up kisses me and it was a very, very passionate kiss. I turned to Chris and I go, you wanna join in? And he starts running away and I go, oh. Stop. I need to go find Chris, I need to explain this to him, I need to explain how polygamy works because he obviously doesn't get the concept. So I was running to go and find Christopher and I couldn't find him and I got to this area where it was like locked off and secured. I didn't know what the password was, it had like a little safe thing on it. And so I had to go find someone to help me and the password was like something like 1492. And I sat down and I go, Chris, what is wrong with you? And he just keeps crying and I go, all right, you need to tell me like who hurt you so bad that you cannot let me love other people. You just let it all, like let it all out. Basically, this is his entire story. So this is the story. So Chris, when he was younger, was sort of challenged. He was very bright, I guess, except for when it came to shapes. He used to get made fun of a lot because he didn't know how to draw shapes and whatnot. He would always in school, when he had to draw a square, he would draw like a weird version of a square and he could never name them properly. The two most shapes that he used to confuse with were circles and squares. He used to call them clairs and skirkles and people would always make fun of him. And so he went his entire life doubting himself and not knowing what was a Claire and what was a skirkle. So he got out of high school, he was done with that and he 
took his boat and he sailed across the ocean blue. So Chris was sailing across the ocean blue in 1492. So he took this journey across the world and he was just on the ocean and he would mark out his mappings. And once he was getting close to the end, he realized that his tracings were in the shape of a clare, a made up shape that no one that no one believed in, that everyone said was fake, but it was his own. And he was so excited because he had discovered that a clare was a real shape and that his world that he lived in was in the shape of a clare. He got so, so excited. He couldn't wait to go and tell everyone in his hometown. And he got so excited that he forgot that he was on a boat. And he started running, like running like Jesus Christ on the water. And he drowned. I honestly don't know how English literature and composition work, but somehow he was connected emotionally to his boat so much and he has spent so much time on it that when he sunk, his boat sunk too. Slowly, one by one, he started to notice that more people started to come down and join him and he started to notice a pattern with all these people and they were fallen Disney stars. The more people started to join and he started to really find his home and find his real community. And so one day, even though he had all these friends and he had this entire life, he wanted something more. Now, he was falling in love with another girl, but he was like, I need to find another one, even though I like you, but I need someone else. So he decided to go on Tinder. And that's when he found me. And that is how our love story began. And it ended after he told me this story because I was totally, totally freaked out that he liked another girl before me. Don't worry, that's not the end. The story is not complete yet because I still have Mr. Moby's pocket hanky, which has his phone number on it. I will be going on a Tinder date with Mr. Mosby. I'm super excited, so I'll tell you guys how that goes. I hope you guys enjoyed this story and I hope you learned from it. That is all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Peace, love, unicorns, Anna is out. Also, don't forget to subscribe and to like this video and subscribe to this video and like to this video and to subscribe to this channel and like this video and subscribe and comment and subscribe and like and subscribe and like and bye.